Salam and hello from the Pakistan Monument. This glorious monument stands here to pay tribute to the people of Pakistan, to the heroes of Pakistan, and above all, to the diversity of Pakistani culture and heritage. From this monument, from right here, we are taking you on a fascinating journey to explore Pakistan's ancient Buddhist heritage. Are you ready? In this virtual tour, we are bringing to you a series of visual stories in collaboration with Pakistani institutions and experts. The purpose of these visuals is to connect with the cultures of the Silk Road, to celebrate cultural diversity, and to celebrate expressions of culture. Pakistan is an important country of the Silk Road. It was the channels of the Silk Road in Gandhara that spread Buddhism from the lands of Pakistan to Central Asia, China, and Far East. This video series is a fascinating journey to explore the treasures of Gandharan Buddhism in Pakistan. In this first part, we will give you an overview of Buddhism in Gandhara. In the next part, we will take you to the heart of Gandhara in Peshawar and Mardan to give you a visual treat of the Buddhist heritage there. For the third part, you will travel with us to Texla to explore the treasure trove of Buddhist heritage coming down from the 3rd century BC. Yes, Swat is next on our virtual journey. In this episode, we will take you to some of the most sacred Buddhist sites in Swat. The fifth and final episode will bring to you glimpses of the ancient Buddhist heritage in Islamabad and Rawalpindi. When we say Gandhara, we basically refer to the area around today's Peshawar and Charsadda. However, in its mature phase, Gandhara extended its boundaries over an area of about 200,000 square kilometers. In our world today, Gandhara stretched from northern Pakistan to southeastern Afghanistan. In today's Pakistan, these areas were included in Gandhara. Originally, the name of Gandhara was mentioned in Vedic literature, which is aided by Bahishtun inscription of Darius. The sources, the coin sources which mentions or which help us to understand the history of this region can be dated back to the period of Mauryans or before them, particularly the Panchtamar coins are the earliest coins of this area. After Mauryans, Panchmark coins did not continue. But the Indo-Greeks, who were actually belonging to Bactria, they introduced the Bactrian style or Greek style of coin in this land. After Indo-Greeks, it, it is continued by Scythians and Parthians, then Kushans, and after Kushans, it was continued by uh, the Shahiya dynasties, or known as Turk Shahis and Hindu Shahis. Buddhism in Gandhara evolved, matured, and expanded over a period of 1,000 years between the 3rd century BC and the 8th century Common Era. Buddhism reached its pinnacle in Gandhara at a time when it declined in other parts of the subcontinent. Gandhara attracted conquerors, scholars, monks, artists, traders, and travelers. Gandhara was the melting pot of cultures. Well, uh, Gandhara, uh, uh, right from the times of uh, Hinduism or uh, before Buddhism flourished, uh, uh, for, it was a sacred land even for Hinduism because uh, the major part of Vedas were compiled in this region. 
The other most important thing was that the Chandragupta Maurya or the Mauryan family belonged to uh, Texala or the Gandhara region. The third emperor of, of this family was Ashoka the Great. He was a Hindu emperor. Uh, he was converted to uh, Buddhism and because of that he changed his uh, view of uh, governing the region. Uh, he avoided uh, uh, violence and because of that he became a staunch Buddhist. And when he started uh, uh, preaching Buddhism, his focus of preaching Buddhism was also on Texala and Gandhara. The proof of flourishing or uh, preaching of Buddhism in this area can be uh, attested from two edicts. One uh, Buddhist edict is in Mansera and the other is in Shabazz Gadi, um, on the basis of which we can say that uh, Buddhism was brought to this area or uh, preached in this area uh, by the Ashoka. And then Gand Gandhara became a very sacred land of Buddhism because Buddhists think that Buddha was also born in his previous lives also in this region, in Gandhara. Guru Padma Sambhava, who was born in Swat, he was a guru who uh, spread Buddhism to the Eastern uh, Asia. It is also said that Mahayana Buddhism also flourished in this area. The famous Gandharan art, which, which is a very famous uh, different style of uh, Gandhara art uh, that has influences from the Greek art especially, it also flourished in this region. Gandhara art and sculptures beautifully portrayed the skills of the Greek sculptors combined with the spirituality of Buddhist monks and philosophers. These masterworks of art are spread across the Buddhist sites in Gandhara, from Taxla, Peshawar and Mardan to Swat, the old Udiana. The period under discussion is the 2nd century BCE to the 6th century uh, after the Christian era. So that 800 year period of civilization of the Buddhists in the valley has left a very vast array of sites that one can see. Uh, although the Chinese travelers that went through that area have said that there were some 1400 monasteries in the valley that was then Udiana. We have a wonderful example of a stupa in Shingardar, where the elephant bearing the relics of Buddha came to a standstill and in reverence to that a stupa was made. We have a wonderful example of a stupa in Amluk Dara. We have uh, wonderful remains in a location called Nimogram. We have a, a stupa in Abasin, China. We have a local name for a stupa called Gumbat, which is the only double dome stupa in a place called Balokile, which is in, uh, in, in the Swat Valley. Uh, other than that, Butkara is called Butkara 1, Seydu Sharif. But the Seydu Sharif 1 site is the example of a stupa where the first rock carvings of depicting the life of Lord Buddha have been, uh, have been enshrined. So the Jahanabad Buddha is only about 12 kilometers from the main city of Saidu Sharif, uh, 700 centimeters from toe to uh, crown. It is the finest specimen of a rock relief that exists in the subcontinent today. And after the destruction of the Bamiyan Buddhas in Afghanistan, today the Jahanabad Buddha holds the uh, place as the largest rock carving in South Asia. From Swat, our journey will lead us to key Buddhist sites in Islamabad and Rawalpindi. Islamabad is the capital of Pakistan. Adjacent to it is the city of Rawalpindi. These two cities are the gateway to the ancient Gandhara and the Indus Plain. In this capacity, Islamabad and Rawalpindi has some of the important Gandharan sites. Banfakira Stupa is from Kushan period, dating back to the 2nd to 5th century. It is located on the Margala Hills. The second gem 
is a second century Mankiala stupa. According to one belief, the stupa is one of the 84 such buildings which were built during the reign of Mauryan Emperor Ashoka to house the ashes of Buddha. Let's start our journey to the heart of Gandhara. We are taking you to Peshawar and Mardan in the next episode. Let's go there.